the parable of the prodigal son. This is the greatest short story in or out of the Bible. Now Jesus spoke this parable in answer to the petrified Pharisees. They were murmuring and they were complaining, they were accusing Jesus of slumming. They say of all the things, he takes time out with sinners, he goes home and he sits down and eats with them. Let me tell you, that's the best recommendation they could have given him. The reason I love him is because he saved a sinner like me. But now when this boy gets lost, nobody goes to look for him. He had to come to himself. Now let's see. Why was he lost? Well, he went and made a fatal demand. He went to his father and told his father, he was very courteous about it, and he said, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. The boy said, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. I want it now. I know I'm going to get it when you're gone, but I don't want to wait that long. I want it now. I want to go leave here. I want to move away from uh, this parental authority. I want to move away and be my own man. I don't want to be fenced in. I, I want to go out there and live life to my satisfaction. Give me potion that good that fall to me. And as any good father will, this father, I dare say, tried to reason with that boy, but when he could no longer reason with him. And you know, some of us, you just can't reason. I dare say there's somebody right here. Your parents tried to steer you in the right direction, but no, you would have no part of it. You wanted to do your own thing your way. When the poor father couldn't reason with the son, then he divided the goods between both boys. The next morning early, a tender scene took place at the gate. There the father is giving the boy the final word of counsel. When you get where you're going, I want you to spend your money wisely and save some. Watch out for the crowd with which you run. And every time I read this, I wonder about this boy's mother. No doubt she was standing there weeping. But nothing they could do or say would dissuade the boy. He took his journey, and that journey stretched into days and stretched into weeks. And I don't know where he went, but he went so far away from home that nobody would know him and would be sending reports back home as to how he's getting along. He went away from home went so far that the old folk wouldn't be coming up to spend a weekend with him. He went away from home. You know, sin places distance between man and God. Sin sponsors every trip away from God. This young man went away, and when he got where he was going, the Bible says he wasted his substance in riotous living. Now, you don't have to be a a high school graduate to know how to waste. You just let it keep going out, nothing coming in, and after a while, you're going to be in want. Want always follows waste. This boy wasted his property. He wasted his health. He wasted his good name. He wasted his influence. He wasted his time. He wasted his talent. He wasted his future. He wasted his usefulness. And then he wasted the faith that the parents had in him. And then the Bible says, and when he had spent all, a famine rose in the land. Isn't it strange that a famine won't rise until you spend it all? When you spend it all, that's when the famine will rise. And when you spend it all, nobody wants to deal with you. Nobody wants to minister to you when you spend all. But the Bible says that this boy went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now I can see him determining in his heart that I'll not go back home. I'll make it out here. I'd rather stay out here where I am than to go back home. I will go and get me a job, and that's good. 
I can see him walking from farm to farm and from factory to factory. I can see him walking from door to door, but nobody would hide. Then when the Bible says he joined himself to a citizen of that country, that means he lacked stone. He glued himself to that citizen. He stayed around in the way. He pestered. He worried uh, that citizen until finally that citizen reasoned, well, he's here on my hand. I might as well give him something to do. I can't get rid of him. And he tells a boy, go out into the field and take care of my swine. And that boy jumped at the chance. Who ever heard of a Jewish boy slopping hogs? But he said to himself, I'd rather take care of the hogs than to go back home. While they're taking care of the hogs, sitting there, I can see him, sitting there on uh, the fence, watching the hogs eat. And you know, if you're not hungry, it'll make you hungry just to watch hogs eat. They go at it so enthusiastically, and, and they can make it sound so good. That they, 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 and while he was sitting there watching the hogs eat, that boy came to himself. And every individual ought to come to yourself. That boy began to reason with himself. He began to talk with himself. You know, in our day, they say when you talk to yourself, uh, that's a sign of insanity. But let me tell you, you've got good sense when you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself, but be honest with yourself. That boy reasoned with himself. He came to himself. Now the pastor of the Baptist church <laughs> didn't go to him. This boy came to himself. It wasn't the missionary group or the prayer band. This boy came to himself. He reasoned with himself. He said, now, how many hard sir? Of my fathers have plenty and to spare, and I perish with hunger. It doesn't make sense. For me to be sitting out here, dying of starvation, when I could be at home at a welcome table. It doesn't make sense for me to be out here sick and lonely, when I could be at home enjoying the fellowship of the family. It doesn't make sense for me to be in these rags when I can be at home with a good father who will provide for me. It doesn't make sense for me to be here with pig pin mud between my toes when I can be walking on thick carpet. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise and I'm going to my father and when I get there, I'm going to tell him I've sinned. I'm going to tell him I have sinned. And what I like about it, this boy wasn't just talking. He rose up, the Bible says, he arose and came to his father. He got up just like he was. He didn't wait until he felt better. He came just as he was. He didn't wait until he got a better job. He came just as he He didn't wait until he got a change of clothes. He came just as he was. This boy came to his father. And all while he was gone, father was looking and longing and praying and hoping that this boy would come to himself. I can see him now sitting on the end of the porch just about sundown. And he saw a farm silhouetted against the setting sun. And I can see him shading his eyes. And when he recognized that that's my boy, he jumped off of that porch. He forgot about his age. He forgot about his arthritis. He jumped off that porch and ran out to meet the boy. And when he met him, the boy began to make his speech. Father, I have sinned. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. The father smothered out his speech with hugs and kisses. And about that time, the servants came running to see what all of the commotion was about. The father said, go servant and get a robe and put on my son. He's got no business in these rags. Go and get shoes and put on his feet. Got no business being bare for it. Go and get a ring and put on his finger. And that will let him know that he's been restored to the fellowship of the family. Go servant and kill the fatted calf and let's make merry. You notice he didn't say, go and kill a hog and we'll have a ham dinner. That would have reminded the boy of his past. 
What I like about it, when the Lord forgives you, he doesn't bring it up anymore. I'm so glad that the Lord doesn't hold my past against me. I'm so glad ooh, that he has blotted it out. I'm so glad. Can you tell me how you feel since you've been forgiven? Oh, there's rejoicing in my heart. Because I know that the Lord has forgiven me of my sin. And I want to tell you, whatever, whatever mistake you've made, the loving Father is waiting to forgive you if you'll just come back to him. Oh, yes, if you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't you know they had a joyous time? Everybody was happy to see that boy come back home, but his older brother, and he's always, the older brother's always around. Somebody is going to make fun of you when you come back. Somebody's going to criticize you, but never mind that. Thank God I'm at home. I'm saved. I'm forgiven of my sin. They've been blotted out. There'll be rejoicing here tonight. Oh, yes. If you just rise, that person who has strayed away, what I like about the Lord, even though you've gone contrary to his will, messed up your life, and then if you come back to him, he will receive you. I know he will. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Oh, if you just come back to him, those, those who are out there and not being useful in the kingdom of our Lord, if you're out of circulation and can't be used, if I were you, I'd rise up tonight and come on back to the Father. Well, if you've broken fellowship with the Father and the family, if there's somebody that you just can't stand, you possibly you sit on the same pew with them. Oh, but if I were you, I'd come to the Lord tonight and let him, let him forgive me my sins and then restore me to the family. I, if I were you, I would not wait. I wouldn't wait for a more convenient season. I wouldn't wait until the crowd got smaller. I'd come on now. If you are shamed on him before men, he will not acknowledge you before his father. I'd come on now. Don't wait. Don't even wait till Sunday morning. You don't have any guarantee that you'll be here Sunday morning. I'd do it now. We're hung up between the no longer and the not yet. What has been is no longer and what is to be has not come yet. All we have is now. That's all that you can count on. So rise up now and come on to him. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. I wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod. Lord, I'm coming home. I wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. I'm not going to wait, but I'm going to come just as I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. I come. Will you come to him tonight? If you will return to him, he will return to you. And there will be rejoicing in your own life. There will even be rejoicing in heaven. The Lord bless you as you come. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. <laughs>